All right, I'm back with uh, some notes on Mother Goose. Like I said, I would be... Uh, a couple of years ago, I did a tutorial on this song, and it was needlessly drawn out. And uh, so I'm going to try to make this briefer, but I do want to give you pointers and hopefully maybe make this easier for you. Number one, you don't have to play it at the, at the tempo of the record, because that is fast. to play it that fast if you don't want to slow it down be relaxed so play it at the tempo that you're comfortable at number two that opening section is easier with a hammer on than it is with than picking both of those notes on the D string so if I was doing it with hammer ons it would be So that's much easier than going. You got to be pretty accurate in the midst of that strumming to hit that. But Ian almost always picks both of those notes whenever he's doing whatever chord. He almost never does a hammer on in that situation. So if you want to copy him once again, you know, exactly, you, you should pick the, both of those notes. But if it's easier, do a hammer on. All right, when it gets to the verse. As I, as I did want my hands to When it gets to that. So it's just sliding up, going up, arpeggio up, arpeggio down the uh, D and G and B strings. And when you come back to the D, it's a hammer-on pull-off. So all you have to pick is the first and the end. So with this, with this lick, you can play it any way you're comfortable. If you want to play it all with downstrokes, so if you want to play it all with downstrokes, that's cool. That works easy. Um, when I did the play along, I did alternate picking. I've watched video of Ian playing this more recently, and what he does is alternate picking. And he picks both of those with an upstroke. Now I can see the utility of that. Probably lets you play it cleaner than, than alternate picking. So that's how Ian does it. Two upstrokes. Now when you get back to this, after the hammer on pull-up, you want to stay down here on the bass strings. In fact, he just plays the D string at the end of that before going to the C chord. Now when you're doing this arpeggio on the C chord, pause there and then you can strum the D. the strum now when he comes back down I've seen in uh, earlier videos of him playing that just keeping the D shape and reaching down with his pinky and playing that on the A string now, on a more recent version, I think that he po actually pulled his fingers off 
and played, basically was playing the A note, uh, A string, and the open D and G there. And that sounds cool, that's fine. It's a little easier to finger, I think. Really, you could just do it with one finger there, pluck the uh, A string, and then strum the D, open D and G. See, so that sounds fine. So if you find it a little difficult to fret the D and reach down, but I think that this is what he did on the record. Kept the D, kind of reached down there. You're not strumming the whole D chord anyway, you're strumming basically the first few strings there. So that's the second thing. All right, so that kind of covers that. Now the, the strumming is pretty aggressive on those down strokes. I'm kind of overdoing it there just to show you, but he's pretty aggressive with those. When it gets to the walk down by the bathing pond to try and catch some sun. Now when he's the strumming pattern, Ian almost never strums something just straight up, just you know he just hardly ever does that. So when he's doing this walk down, it's a walk down on the D chord. He comes back and he plays the open D string. So you can hear the D string re really ringing out. So that's a note on that strumming pattern there. Now when he gets down to the A minor chord, then he adds the adds the ninth uh, or the seventh up here on the E string. He plucks the G string. Once again, he just can't stand to just keep a strumming pattern going. He has to pick something in there. And that's what he does. Picks the G string. All right, now to get back to the verse, he plays the open D string, which I realize is pretty convenient because that lets you transition back. And I'll show you what I mean. You can hit the open D string as you go back to the chord. Oops, I hit the G instead. So that open D string is kind of a nice little way to get your fingers back to the A chord. A sus2 shape. I won't call it. We know it's a D chord. People give me trouble about that. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just, it's easier for most people to relate it to the capo. So that's why I call this A instead of D. Um, all right, so that's that. Now, when we get to the, the only other part really is the. So that thing is a bear doing it at the tempo of the record. That's really a bear. I mean, it's really difficult. 
And then you're in suspense about, oh gosh, am I going to screw this up? I would refer you back to my video if you want to play like Ian Anderson, Do This, where I went over exercises to help you build your arpeggio skills with a pig. So I would refer you to this uh, video up here in the corner to, to do that. I will, I will show you that cheating makes this a little bit easier. If you do a pull off on the A string, that pull off to me, makes the makes that riff a lot easier than than picking the notes. But if you watch Ian play this, he plays that whole section with alternate picking. So if you feel more comfortable doing a pull off there, I would recommend it. All right, so those are some notes on Mother Goose, and I hope those help you to have fun with this song. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.